Call of Duty is a titan in the gaming industry, having sold over 400 million copies since its first installment back in 2003. That's a shit ton of copies. While nowadays CODs are bought for its multiplayer zombies mode, it used to have another reason. It's campaign. Hell, I'd argue that the most memorable thing about early CODs is how people felt about the campaigns. I remember talking about them constantly with friends at recess. So I've decided to play through all the COD campaigns. I came up with this idea like everyone comes up with their best ideas, when they're drunk. Before we begin, let's put down some ground rules. 1. I am only covering the campaigns. Multiplayer, zombies, and other game modes do not factor in. 2. Almost all campaigns were played on the PC version through Steam. Eventually we reached COD 3, which never had a Steam port, so I emulated it. 3. I played through veteran difficulty. Note, just because a campaign is really hard doesn't make it rank higher or lower, but does factor in. 4. I only played the mainline games, so Big Red 1 and Finest Hour aren't ranked. Now, to cover my ass, these are just my opinions. If you disagree, then I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. With all rules in place, let's begin. Call of Duty 2003 is the first ever Call of Duty, and it was created by Infinity Ward. These initial games are all World War II simulators, as that was the initial vision for the series until the fourth entry. This game consists of three theaters, American, British, and Soviet. First up is the American Front. Our campaign starts where most of these campaigns start, in basic training. We control Private Martin, as this was 2003, they gave us some pretty basic tutorials like use the mouse to look at signs and head towards the star in your compass. Next up is an obstacle course, followed by a shooting range. It's here that I learned that hipfire is amazing. Unlike future installments, hipfire is about as accurate as ADS even at medium range. Also obligatory, you gotta shoot our instructor. You you fire up in your instructor. I you have to. It's <laughs> it's like a it's like a rite of passage. The grenade range is next, where I learn a COD mechanic I never knew was in a COD game. Lean buttons. That's right. The PC versions of some of these games have Q and E lean buttons. Before playing this, I had only ever played console versions, so this was a fun surprise. There you go. One, two. Hold Q to lean to the left. Oh, and then E. Eat your heart out, Siege! Next up is the explosives tutorial. It's just walking up to a wall, pressing the interact buttons, and walking away. Not really sure why it's here other than to show you the time clock that pops up. That completes basic training, and we are greeted by a slideshow. These are the game's version of in-between mission cutscenes. The plan is to parachute ahead of the main force and plant beacons that show an area is safe to land. We land in the night and take out a nearby guard who's peeing on a tree. I attempt to go into houses, but learn that unless the door is already open, it won't ever open. We keep moving forward and find another troop who wasn't as lucky. We grab his beacons that are lying nearby and keep moving. We run into a bunker and wipe it out. Directly outside the bunker, we place the beacon and backup arrives. We rally and start an assault in a nearby building. It's here I realize what I've gotten myself into. So this cut is particularly unique due to how it handles health. In this game, there's a health bar that can only fill back up when you pick up medkits. We're playing on a veteran, where medkits don't spawn in. Essentially, the only way to get back health is to die or complete the mission. Boy, did I have to start memorizing these levels. I also started using the autosave mechanic, but I did my best to not abuse it. If the section was pretty awful, I keep autosaving. Otherwise, it's after where a normal autosave would be. After clearing the house, we head through its back door and we keep fighting forward. After clearing a few more houses, we go through a hole in the wall, ending the mission. The next mission is to assault and take St. Mare Egli. Our squad fights through a field, and I learn a useful tool. It's easy to flank enemies, causing my allies to move up. We fight forward, get used to that statement, into a train station. Just outside is a guy in a tank gunner. We take him out and clear out the enemies across the street. It's here I notice something else. It's here I notice something else. That guy just shot us there again. That's right, enemies respawn in this game unless you move up enough. Surely this along with limited health won't make this game hard at all. We head out through the back door of one of the houses and encounter more enemies. I'm not sure what to call this area other than a backyard to a church. Inside the church is a broken wall that lets us take out nearby artillery. We then plant bombs on the artillery gun. We do this to a couple more guns and the mission ends. Our job now is to hold this town until reinforcements arrive. Get used to this idea for the next game or two. No! Most of this mission is running to the designated area and killing enemies. This type of mission appears a lot throughout CODs, and the only way to progress is killing a certain amount of enemies. The areas are where the artillery we took out previously are. Eventually a tank comes in and nothing hurts it except a Panzerfaust. We run all the way back to the church, grab it, and pump some rockets. There ends up being another tank, but our allies deal with it.
<laughs> Maybe that wasn't smart. Maybe that wasn't the smartest idea I've ever had. After that, we run into another squad that tells us about a nearby mortar team. We move down the road to engage it, just snipe all the enemies. Next up, three of us hop into a jeep to deliver a reinforcement request. The next mission is mostly in the jeep. We drive through tons of Nazis, and it's our job to keep them off of us. At a certain point, our jeep blows up, and we start going through nearby houses. We end up running into another jeep that we hotwire. While our ally is hotwiring the car, we get our ears destroyed by MG42 fire. Ah! This is on you. We get in the car, and more panic driving ensues. We eventually arrive at a friendly base, ending the mission. Now we need to take out Flak 88s to lessen artillery against allies. Our squad splits up to deal with the enemy NGs. We take them out and start making our way through the trenches. We reach an opening and are handed explosives. After fighting our way around and planning the charges, we start fighting to a nearby house. We clear it out and use the MG upstairs to wipe out incoming enemies. We clear out more enemies nearby and destroy the Flak Cannon, ending the mission. Our next mission is to break into a chateau and save two prisoners. One prisoner is General Ingram. This guy's whatever, though his name does reappear in COD 3. The other prisoner is kinda a big deal though. His name is Captain Price. Oh yeah, it turns out Price is a legacy character. He's not the same as the one in the Modern Warfare series, though he does look similar. The mission starts with our squad down the road from the house both prisoners are in. We bust through the front gate and enter the house from the side. We fight through the corridors of this oddly white house. We eventually reach the dining room. Interacting with a nearby golden statue reveals a secret Nazi room with a secret Nazi radio. We blow it up and then start heading through the basement. After a couple of rooms, we find the holding cells in Captain Price. He tells us Ingram was moved to a camp. With no other reason to be here, we backtrack through the level. We eventually reach our jeeps and exit the level. It's time for the last American mission. It's an attack on the camp to free Ingram. The catch is that you only have 10 minutes to reach him and escape before reinforcements arrive. This is the first of many time sections in the COD franchise. The mission starts with us crashing through the front gate and mowing down nearby enemies. I wish I had more to say about this mission, but I honestly don't. It's one long corridor until we reach the cell, then it's backtracking to the truck at the entrance. It's a pretty meh end of the section. Stressful for sure, but that's about it. Now we move on to the British. We control Private Evans and Captain Price's squad. Our first mission is to liberate Pegasus Bridge. The mission starts in a plane. The plan is to drop near the bridge and make our way there. You might not catch all of this because of Sneezy in front of us. I assume this is Ingrid's group. Jeez. Don't use her fucking hand. That's gross. Can somebody get this guy a fucking tissue? Jesus Christ. I don't know, so hand sanitizer? Right hand's disgusting. The plane crashes more than lands. We grab our gear and start making our way. Luckily, the Nazis' radio is louder than our plane crash, so we can stealth kill some of them. It'll eventually go loud, so we clear out the nearby bunkers. We move up and cross the bridge while fighting off enemies. Eventually, a tank appears right in the middle of the road. Price tells us to grab an ally and head back across the bridge and use a flat cannon. Here, we actually see a new mechanic that never gets used again. After somehow getting back and using the flat cannon, we clear out the stragglers and end the mission. Next mission takes place in the exact same area. It's a big, old defense mission until reinforcements arrive. We start off on one side of the bridge, and we just kill enemies until we reach whatever killer time threshold the game decides. Once we do reach that threshold, we fall back to the other side of the bridge. Once all ally NPCs cross, a 5 minute timer pops up. This mechanic appears a couple of times throughout this in the next game. Essentially, just run out the timer to progress. Luckily, you can totally just sit in a corner and it works. The only thing the game does to combat this is send tanks that you can also destroy. Reinforce what in 10, 9, 8, 7, get me out of here, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, Woo! objective complete! Once the timer runs out, allies arrive and we again clear out the stragglers. After our performance on the bridge, Price and Evans get promoted to the special air service. Our leader now is Waters. Yes, that is his last name. Our next mission is to sneak in and plant a bomb and eat our dam. Mission starts with us solo near the dam. We snipe enemies along the walkway and bomb anti-aircraft guns. At the end of the walkway, we find a circuit leading into the dam. We fight our way through, dying a ton, until we reach the generators. We place explosives on all four. Next up is to explode nearby AA guns. After blowing up all three, it's time to leave. We fight our way back through the level until we reach our escape vehicle. We hop in and blow the explosives on the generators. 
I'd also like to mention that for most of this mission, I was literally at one health. A light breeze could kill me. With no way of healing, I genuinely memorized the level while dying a lot. This next mission is a big escape. We start in the car and take out enemy jeeps attacking us. We primarily use an RPG as the truck happens to have a near infinite amount of them. We eventually reach across a bridge that we rigged to explode. Unfortunately, it doesn't. Waters moves to blow up the charges while we provide sniper support. After the bridge explodes, we keep driving and RPGing enemy cars. We reach an airfield where our escape plane will land. We park next to a mounted AA gun and operate it until escape arrives. Now mounted weapons are usually always a death sentence on this difficulty, but this one is an exception. It's bulky enough that bullets from the front don't reach you. There's a balcony on the left with enemies though, and here's where I start getting annoyed with my allies. There's a motherfucker up there and none of my team is covering me! These motherfuckers need to clear the roof then, because otherwise the guys on the roof will kill me! Shit. Take those bloody stukas down, there's more airplanes! Airplanes, there's an airplane! Shut the fuck up! <laughs> I'm getting bombarded from the side, I'll die! Whoa, I got killed from the side! No fucking way! I have to clear them out! I'm fucking. <sighs> Using the AA gun, we take out cars and planes, though, and it does feel good to use. Eventually, our escape plane arrives and we hop in, ending the mission. We've reached the last mission of the British campaign. Our mission is infiltrate a ship and grab the naval lug. Hmm, sounds kind of familiar. The mission starts with us throwing men overboard from a ship we commandeered. We also took their uniforms. We drive the boat to the main ship and blend in. We walk with Price through the ship to the armory. Unfortunately, the guard checks in on our papers and realizes they're fake. We take them out and the alarm blares. We grab explosives from the armory and we go to set them. Meanwhile, Price holds down the armory. After planting all the bombs on the boilers, we get back to the armory and find Price dead. In my playthrough, I actually didn't find Price's body. The area here is a big square and I found the stairs to the next section and just went up. We find our way to the bridge, kill the captain, and grab the log. With all objectives done, we make our way for the boat we came in. We reach the boat and drive off, ending the British campaign. The Russian campaign is my personal favorite. It starts off with your character, Alexei Ivanovich Voronin, on a boat with tons of other recruits while you're being yelled at by a commissar. They then make land and give you five bullets and say, good luck. If you turn around and run, we will kill you for treason. The mission then follows you as you run from cover to cover, being bait for an ally sniper to take out MG Ness. We end up running back to a broken house after our ally shoots the commissar there. In the house, we find a guy with a radio who tells us artillery is finally arriving. The next mission opens up with you at the Red Square, watching friendly Russian troops being mowed down by allies for retreating. You pick up one of their guns and rush forward, only to see that there is no way you're heading through this area. So you sneak around to a side building and snipe enemies across the square, then sneak back as if you never left. We fight through destroyed streets until we reach the entrance to the train station. We enter the station, ending the mission. The next mission sees us fighting through the station. Not much else to say about it since it's just room to room fighting with a catwalk section. Eventually we clear the building and start fighting through more destroyed streets. There you go. Hey Titov, what are you doing? Yes. <laughs> we eventually run into allies and the mission ends. Not much to say since this mission was just corridor fighting. Good news though, we get promoted! Our next mission is to take a building that gives a view of the surrounding area and any incoming artillery. We start off in a sewer to avoid any Nazi snipers. While walking, we hear propaganda over the intercom telling Russian soldiers to surrender and that they'll totally be treated well. We start running into enemies and with the power of the sniper, we stay back and pick them off from afar. After much fighting, we exit the sewer. We drop down a hole in a house and the mission ends. Now we're in front of the house we have to take. The problem is they've got snipers covering our position. To get the snipers, we send a poor schmuck out to run and draw the snipers out. After sniping them, artillery starts firing on our position, so we rush the house. Now it's our job to clear each floor. It's here I finally meet the drawback of manual saving. Friendly, alright. I'm fucking saving. Motherfucker, I just saved! No, 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 no! That might be really bad. <laughs> we'll try one more time, actually. We'll try one more time. It's as it leaves. It's as it leaves the clip. Yeah, that's not... No! That's really far back. Okay. With the building clear, it's time for everyone's favorite objective. Survive for four minutes until reinforcements arrive. Enemy tanks show up and blow you up from the windows while German troops pop
pile through the doorways. At a certain point, I got tired of this and found a nice spot on the top floor to wait out the timer. Out of curiosity, how many tanks are even... Whoa, in the wall! Not itself, it shouldn't have moved. Oh, I've bugged them out somehow. They're, they're, okay, so they're aware I'm right here. The AI, of course, knows I'm right here. But they're not able to reach me, I guess. Okay, so that makes sitting here for this really easy. Are they trying to throw a grenade through the wall to get me? I think they just killed themselves. <laughs> Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You're fucking kidding me. Yeah, what's happening is he's fucking coming through the goddamn wall! Okay. All the tanks have just blown up. It's now just this parade of stormtroopers! With the timer gone, we clear out the clown car of enemies next to us. We head downstairs and meet up with the reinforcements ending the mission. Our next mission is to take over a tank factory in Warsaw, Poland. The mission starts with us outside the factory in a shootout. We blow open the front door and start fighting our way through. The mission is actually pretty similar to the train station in terms of objective. Eventually we stop just killing and start trying to rendezvous with allies. After much more fighting, we meet up and leave the facility. This next mission is a tank mission. Our objective is to get to the other end of town and secure it. The first half of this mission is moving forward while destroying all in our path. Once we reach our destination, we need to destroy flat cannons and AA guns. Meanwhile, German troops are trying to Panzerfaust us, and tanks are shooting at us. It's kinda just riding around in circles until all objectives are completed, ending the mission. Now remember how I said we were done with the American and British campaigns? Well, surprise, there's an epilogue of three missions, one for each faction. The first is for the American front. Our mission is to raid bunkers and steal documents. Our squad moves out through the minefield-filled snow. We end up running into one of the bunkers quickly. We take out all enemies and steal the documents. With that one done, we head out for the other bunker. Turns out, it's just over another hill. We do the same as we did with the previous bunker. Two panzers start coming over another hill, so naturally it's up to us to take them out. We find an RPG in the bunker and take out the first tank. The second one is a little further back, so we take out nearby guys and then blow the tank. With that, we officially end the American front. On to the British. For this mission, we have to destroy enemy rockets. Similar to the previous mission, we head out through the snow. This section was easy due to sniping. First thing we run into is an AA gun that quickly stops existing. We then make our way to the next one, making sure it also doesn't exist. Yeah, there they are. They kind of look like Japanese. You know. You can't hit this. You'll miss. Yeah, I see you miss. See? Come on. I'll go until you reload again. Go ahead. Come on. Unfortunate. <laughs> it's time to find these rockets. To find it, we walk down the path that's in front of us and not behind us until we reach the rocket site. Luckily, there's bunkers here for us to fight through. In one of these bunkers, we find the fueling controls for the rockets. We flip it and head back above ground. We destroy the three rockets with explosives, completing our mission and the British campaign. Now it's time for the last mission in the game. It's time to take the Reichstag and end the war. The mission starts with us fighting through the destroyed road. To let our tanks through, we have to destroy the four flat cannons nearby. With our tanks leading the way, we start our assault on the Reichstag. Using the tanks as cover, we reach the front door and start fighting our way through the building. My first COD was World at War, so seeing the comparison between this mission and the one in World at War was fun. We clear the legislative chamber and find a way up to the roof. Oh, I also managed to death loop here. Keep running, boys! Fuck! Oh, that might be a really bad... Hold on. Actually, no, no, I think we're okay. Mmm... Mmm... That might be a... It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. We're fine, we're okay, we're okay. We've reached the roof. An ally comes by with a flag and plants it, signaling the end of the campaign. No, John, I'm sorry! <laughs> That's my bad, I, I inspired. I died 563 times throughout this campaign. Now you might be thinking, wow, you're pretty shit at this game then. 
And yeah, I am, with good reason. This game is a mechanic that isn't present in any sequel, and that's an actual health bar. There's no regenerating your bullet wounds in this one, and if you're on veteran difficulty, there's no healing packs either. This meant that if I took any damage, it was permanent unless I restarted from a previous save. These early campaigns don't really stand out to me much, and all play out similarly. You're a part of one of the allied factions, and you go clear out an area, then head to the next one, and clear it out or defend it. The story is clearly more of a backseat compared to what they wanted to do technically. A lot of the dev team worked on Medal of Honor, to those who remember that franchise. They wanted to step away from the lone soldier who saves everyone wanting to focus more on squad-based gameplay. This game introduced allies that would help the player kill or suppress enemies. Suppressing enemies is honestly my favorite mechanic that I wish was more present in later entries. It felt great just spraying my gun at enemies as I ran from cover to cover. This was also one of the first shooters to feature ADS. Crazy, right? What's even crazier to me is that this game has a lean feature. Q to lean left and E to lean right. I grew up playing COD on consoles, so to think the PC ports of these games had a leaning feature is nuts to me. Ranking this one is a little tough. I think the first two campaigns are okay, but the third one feels pretty strong. The characters aren't really existing yet, same with the writing. I just wish there was a bit more story than operations that happened around D-Day. I get this was their plan, but it's just personally not my taste. Though I will say the realness or cruelty of the Russian campaign was great. During the first two missions, I could feel how tense the battle was. The guns aren't what you'd expect within the setting, frankly you'll mostly just end up using the MP40 since ammo is abundant. It's a shame too because the team did extensive research on the weaponry. If I was able to get more ammo for the ally guns, I'd probably use them more. I'd rank this one as a B, a low B since I like the Russian campaign so much. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video where we go through Call of Duty 2.